GPT-40 updates brought with us something else that I think is going to be very powerful, the Chat GPT desktop app. And it is out now. So I'm going to quickly tell you the five things that you need to know about the new Chat GPT desktop app. All right, let's jump straight into it. All right, well, number one is it's out, right? So if you have the Chat GPT Plus account, so right now this is for paid users only. Uh, you should have gotten a uh, pop-up notification, but not everyone did. So when you are inside Chat GPT, make sure to click on the upper right-hand corner for your settings, and there should be a new uh, icon there that says "Download the Mac OS app." All right, so that's number one that you need to know. Number two, which is the most important, is this isn't everything that was demoed. So if you followed along uh, to uh, OpenAI's spring event about three weeks ago, you saw a lot of very impressive demos with the ChatGPT app. This is not all of it, okay? So a lot of the live capabilities, so the ability for the new model, GPT-40, to kind of see and interact, you know, people call it her, uh, you know, very similar to Google's Project Astra. We call it just Live Omni, right? GPT-4 Omni, but it's not available, so, right? So you'll see in this, uh, the demo from OpenAI, um, kind of going over ability for it to see and interact with whatever you share your screen. So I'll show you here, but this feature is not yet available. So uh, on the desktop app, presumably we will be getting a lot of these features in the coming weeks, as well as kind of this improved, uh, you, you know, voice capabilities and the ability to uh, interact with the chat GPT app with low latency in almost real time. So you'll see this button here on the screen. We're not going to have that on our chat GPT app. That essentially gives chat GPT the uh, ability to kind of see in real time. However, you can still upload screenshots pretty easily. So I just want to let that know, uh, let everyone know that this isn't, everything isn't out yet. So what we saw in the spring event, we don't have access to all of that just yet. Uh, number three, the thing that we need to know, and I'm going to go ahead and open and launch the app, right? So here we have the chat GPT app on the desktop icon there. There we go. So, uh, this only works on newer Macs. Okay. So the app does not work on windows machine. We obviously saw window copilots version essentially, uh, of this. So that's why we don't have it on windows. So we only have it on Macs. but you need to have a newer Mac, uh, that uses Apple Silicon chip. So you need to be on a Mac M1, M2, M3, M4, etc. So if you're on an older Intel based Mac, it will not work. All right. So that's number three. Number four, what you need to know is I think it's pretty cool. The new, uh, launcher. So all you have to do is click option and space bar to launch. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hopefully show that here on my screen. So there we go. Option space bar and you get this little thing. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, what is the weather in St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, Missouri today? And then what that does is it launches uh, the chat GPT app. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if we can zoom in a little bit there. Well, maybe you can't see it, but uh, you know, it launched right there. So it's searching the four sites and it's giving me now the information. So, uh, I love that, uh, those capabilities to instantly launch, uh, a new chat, a new query, no matter where you are, if you have this installed with that new option, uh, option space bar, um, kind of key. Um, so, and, and here's, here's the last thing that you need to know is it's bringing capabilities that we did not previously have um, on the desktop app. It's bringing over some mobile only capabilities, mainly is the uh, ability to speak uh, to chat GPT with voice. So uh, again, we had this already on the mobile app. We did not have it on desktop. So you'll see here, um, I'm in my same chat GPT account and my only option, obviously I can upload different files, but I don't have the option to just click and talk. I could still use a shortcut um, on my Mac. So as an example here, Let's see if I can get it to, to fire. Uh, sometimes I can't do these. You know, I do these things live. I might have disabled it. Anyways, um, there is no built-in capabilities uh, right here in the web site to do this, but you'll see here in the web app, we do have the capabilities to just talk. So let me just go ahead and uh, go ahead and click this. What is the weather over the next three days for St. Louis, Missouri?
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel a lot of that now. But uh, when you do use the voice app, it does obviously put all of the results um, in the uh, in the chat pane as well. Uh, so those are the five new things. And I'll show you a couple other things uh, here since we're in the interface. So uh, these aren't new necessarily, but they're worth knowing. So at any time, uh, kind of the, the updated interface, we also saw that with GPT-4 and a couple of things that are different. So you'll see here in the desktop app, uh, let me go ahead and try to try to move uh, move my face out of the way there. There we go. So you'll see here in the desktop app, the settings are still in the bottom left-hand corner, right? Uh, but in the web app, the settings are now in the upper right-hand corner. So a couple things that are new and different, uh, even within the app interface, everything else is kind of uh, still the same. However, you can still upload files, uh, you know, drag and drop. So as an example, you know, uh, we, we started this with this little... Uh, with this little uh, video here, right? Uh, or this little screenshot that said five things you need to know about the GPT-40, right? So uh, if I want to, I can obviously just drag uh, that screenshot in there, drop it in and just say, what is this, right? So that's, that's another thing is uh, I think you need to get used to um, using the vision capabilities of ChatGPT because once this new update uh, that we talked about here does come out where you have that one-click ability to share your desktop with ChatGPT, I do think at least for the foreseeable couple of months, this is going to be the fastest and the best way to work. So if you are looking to grow your business uh, using generative AI, I do think this ChatGPT app uh, is going to be one of the best ways. All right. So as a quick recap, the five things you need to know, number one, it is out now for most paid subscribers. So go ahead and check your notifications. Number two, this isn't the full version of the app. We don't get everything. Uh, we didn't get this uh, nice little features and you know all the new voice capabilities that should be coming in the coming weeks. Number three, it's only available on newer Macs with M1, M2, M3, M4 chips. Uh, number four, you have the option space launcher. And number five, it is bringing capabilities to the desktop that we only had previously available in the mobile app. All right. I hope that was helpful. If so, please let me know. Subscribe to this channel, but also go to youreverydayai.com. Sign up for our free daily newsletter. We do this little AI in five almost every single day. Uh, and we do a live stream podcast and newsletter as well. So make sure you go sign up for that. Let me know here in the comments what you want to see. Sometimes I'm slow responding to the comments, but I'm going to get better. So let me know if this was helpful and what you want to see next. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you back for another AI in five. Thanks y'all.